Live from the San Jose Convention Center, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering Hadoop Summit 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Hortonworks, and by EMC, Pivotal, IBM, Pentaho, Teradata, SyncSort, and by Attunity. Now your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Silicon Valley in San Jose Convention Center for Hadoop World, Hadoop Summit 2015. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Our next guest is Lawrence Schwartz, CMO of Attunity. Welcome back to theCUBE. You've been on every CUBE we've had. I kind of slipped, I said Hadoop World 2015, but it's Hadoop Summit. Right. It's the same ecosystem. Yeah, you've been seeing it evolve over the years. It's been uh, interesting to be on here, kind of talk about the growth from each one and as over time. But uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be back. So I want to get your perspective. We've had many chats over many cubes over the many five, six. This is our sixth year at the cube. Right, right. What's your take? I mean, you have a historic perspective. We've been in the front lines for the entire present and creation of the Hadoop ecosystem. So, yeah. what's your take? Are you are we high fiving each other too early? Uh, uh, as <laughs> yeah. we cross the chasm, as people said, I mean, right, George right. and I are like, hey, the industry, we're, you know, high fiving each other, yeah. self congratulatory, but customers aren't like high fiving us, right, are right. they, or, or are they? Yeah, Tell well, us. I think you know, you've you've seen a lot of articles recently. You've had Gardner talking about being at the peak, right, and just kind of crossing over that. Um, so I think there's been a lot of hype. Um, the nice thing is, over the past few years, we've kind of seen the the promise, right? Then you've kind of seen some adoption, people trying projects. And what's been exciting for us, and we work with a lot of customers who have traditional data stores and on-premise, and then they're trying to figure out Hadoop, is we're actually starting to see the return on value. Now it's still a definitely a large gap, right? The number of deployed systems uh, for Hadoop, you know, the numbers in the thousands versus you know you've got still billions of dollars going into data warehouses. Yeah. So um, it's an active and noisy area, but we're actually starting to see some real values with customers. Yeah, George and I were talking, or, um, and, uh, and Dave and I were talking at the last event, and also we had uh, Informatica World we went to. Yeah. You know, this whole master data thing, we were just talking with Talent about this. There's no doubt that there's going to be some shakeup, but it's never going to go away. The data warehousing, business intelligence stuff, right. it's classic, it's just such a massive market. But there's, a, there's success costs involved of having this awesome yes. data warehouse. Mm -hmm. it's just if you can do it at a lower cost. So everyone wants to move portions of it yes. off of the data warehouse into cloud or whatever environment. So that's where I see the check writing going on. Do you right. see the same thing? And what are you guys doing there? Yeah, and that's and that's the place that we've been playing in. So as a company over the past few years, even before you saw a lot of growth in the Hadoop and market and the cloud market was, you know, how do you move, you know, between all the different existing data stores in an environment, whether it was Oracle or DB2 or uh, SQL Server. Um, and that has kind of transcended first into the cloud, so that's actually where we started to grow as a company, supporting Amazon, being a close partner on AWS, so people could figure out what portion, what type of analytics they might want to go from Oracle to Redshift with. Um, and then as Hadoop started to grow, it was the same question of how do I go in an operational environment and take advantage of Hadoop? Because there's plenty of open source tools, there's things like Scoop, people can go start it and you know, get trials going, but then when you want to keep it up, consistency, real time, all this other sort of yeah. information, you have to take another step that, that has to go that way. So we've been helping on focus on the movement of data, and then what's been exciting for us is, um, in uh, uh, just recently, in the last quarter, yeah. we uh, expanded our portfolio, announced the acquisition of a company called Appfluent, um, and they help with that first part of the question is, not just how do I move the data, but what data do I actually want to consider moving, right? I can look into the data warehouse now, there's plenty of legacy systems, they're not going to go away, and how do I figure out which, what's the value of the data in there? Do I have data that really needs that high performance and, um, and other lineage information and whatnot that I really want to keep in there? Um, and what information can I move to, uh, uh, to Hadoop you know, and do kind of the longer tail analytics? Um, so that's been an exciting area because now not only is the question of how do you move, but how do you figure out what to move, and that enables them to kind of cross that that gap, right, and take advantage of the. You guys the have had a great power. success. You were recently named top big data company and database trends and, and applications. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. But I got to ask you, there's a lot of tools out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, sure. tools as in like, you know, tooling. Right. 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 Um, so. There's a lot of noise. How do customers figure out what to do? You guys advise also yeah, on technology. Yeah. That's a huge issue. Yeah. And is that the pretext to replatforming? Yeah. So this is a conversation we were having earlier. So just noise, how do you build yeah. the signal from the noise on the tools? Right. Yeah. And then 
you know, this replatforming trend. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting. You know, when you look at, uh, um, you know, we kind of went from being in data integration space, kind of focusing that area, and then when we talk to customers, it's a broader story about data management, right? So you got to step back and say, forget about, you know, what you're moving to and what the platform is, but what do you want to do with the life cycle of, of your data, right? Because it's going to have some value up at the front, you know, as time goes on, it might have less value, you got to figure out what to move it, how do you optimize on different platforms, and that's the conversation that they want to have, right, before you get into the conversation of, oh, am I going to use Hadoop, am I going to use my existing stores, am I going to use the cloud? Um, so, uh, you know, we've been able to architect the platform that, that cuts across all those different areas, right? So now you're having those broader conversations of, let us figure out, you know, what to move, you know, help you help figure that out, then move it, and then kind of manage that and get it ready for analytics. That sounds like the type of conversation that sort of a trusted advisor would have. Exactly, yes. And so who are you talking to in terms of roles? And, you know, what, just in, in thinking in terms of numbers, we were hearing, yeah. previously, just at the CapEx cost, we were hearing um, data warehousing cost about 35,000 a terabyte, yeah. and um, Hadoop at around 1,700. Yes. But actually, we've heard it was worse, that <laughs> yeah. it's like 100,000 a terabyte, yeah. with operational costs sort of capitalized, and Hadoop down to 1,000 a terabyte, which sounds a bit of a stretch. Yeah, yeah. So, You've got tools now and a relationship where you yes. can advise. Right. So help us, tell us some of the scenarios. Exactly. You know, where you say, is it just the ETL offload stuff? Or, right, right. Or, or what else? Yeah, no, it's, it's a great question. I think that for us, as we've expanded out our portfolio, we're having conversations that, you know, often we have conversations across the spectrum, but when you think about their overall data management products, now you're having, you know, CIO level discussions. Um, and they start thinking about all, all the factors, and I'll give you an example of, um, you know, of how they come to us and how they think about it, right? Again, it tends often not to be a technology play. It's, um, you've got, um, the first and foremost thinking about cost, right? So we've got uh, the top people at an online travel agency, one of the biggest in the world, who came to us and said, look, I've got six petabytes plus growing on my traditional uh, data warehouses. Six petabytes. It, what are they spending on that? Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, they're spending incredible amounts of money, um, and they're trying to figure at out at a hundred thousand a terabyte. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, and this is one of the largest. It's a good business. Shelf. It's a good business. <laughs> it's, it's a very profitable the, business. Yeah. yeah. So the question is not good for the customer. Yeah, they, they're not going to all move everything to Hadoop tomorrow, right? right? You know, they, but they're trying to figure out what makes sense. How do I modernize the architecture, and where can I slot it in? to do the longer term analytics. And the first thing you have to do is go in there and figure out you know, what's being yeah. used, uh, how often, where is it consuming resources, um, and we That's go in there. That's a profiling app, isn't it? It, it is, so uh, what um, AppFluent did as an independent company, it's now under the umbrella of Attunity under visibility, is it can sit there and look at the logs, and you'll have to let it run for a while, or if a customer has the log information, you can kind of pull that and they can use that. And then, it, yeah, it's telling you based on the queries and other things, what's being used. And I like to think of, uh, we're, we're going out there and trying to you know, hunt down the, the zombie data and kind of the vampire data, right? <laughs> We've got all this zombie yeah. data, which is all this data that's sitting there, it's not really being used, um, it's taking up a lot of space, right? Very costly to, to be in a, in a data warehouse. And at the same time, you're talking about ETL processes, you might have a smaller subset of data that's just taking up a lot of the ETL. It's being updated all the time, right? And it's sucking up the, the processing power, so it's kind of like a zombie oh, so sucking that out. It's a, it could be very active, it's just not strategic. It, exactly, so you don't want to use your data warehouse for data that's you know just taking up space and taking up a lot of resources at the end of the day. So you can help profile it and figure out you know very quickly with an assessment of where do I want to move this, right? Um, and for this company, they were able to save right off the bat by putting in uh, um, the solution with Unity Visibility, you know, $6 million, right? It's a nice step, right? And then they can, at the same time, think about how do you curb the growth, right? We have other companies we work yeah. with where they might have terabytes, they may have, uh, you know, scores of terabytes, but they know it's growing and they want to cap that. So we work with them to figure out, okay, how do we cap the level that you have in, say, DB2, um, and then figure out what to offload into uh, into Hadoop or, or to you know, modernize your architecture. So with Merv Adrian's on the cube yesterday, yeah. and he had released his survey. Yes. And you know, talk about the you know glasses half empty, half full was the debate. Yeah. Um, and the survey wasn't painting a rosy picture of adoption. Mm -hmm. um, what's your take on that? I mean, I think Merv's right, but again, the sample size is a little bit too small. Is that a representation of the broader global market? I mean. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I think he's actually right on the survey results. Yeah, yeah. as you craft the, the the results of how he sample sized it. But sure. So sample side aside, he might be right. But 
is that enough sample? I mean, what is the representation of today's market? What's your yeah, take yeah. on that? I mean, yeah, well, we have, uh, as you know, we're, we're but one company, right? But we have thousands of customers worldwide using some form of a Tuni product. And then we have conversations about data management and data integration, what companies want to do. You know, I was talking to our sales guys about it. You can kind of see you know, about half of those conversations now, you know, involve something around what they're trying to do and figure out what they're trying to move with the do. So it is, that prevalence is there. Again, you're starting with smaller numbers. There's a vast amount of, you know, legacy data systems out there, data warehouses. But, you know, it's, it's you can say, you know, at least half or more are having those conversations. So um, That's still good numbers. It, it's fantastic numbers, right? Because, you know, the other half are people who just have, you know, typical management issues or, um, it might be a part of the system they don't need to move, they have other issues to work with. So those are great numbers. And compared to, you know, even two years ago when as a company we were at the cusp of it and looking at it, and we were just having people kind of inquiries and we're like, should we even go into this space, right? And now here we are, no, with yeah. half the conversations. Yeah. That's a pretty amazing advancement. So let me ask one thing. Um sometimes the data management vendor or yeah. data warehouse vendor, they want to have a, a tiered storage, you know, yep, yep. high performance, medium performance, sure, yeah. sort of semi-archive. Yeah. And in, in doing that, they're doing the profiling internally. Mm -hmm. And since they have visibility into, you know, how they're constructing the SQL queries, yeah, yeah. they have a certain level of fidelity in trying to come up with that mix. Right, right. I mean, you're obviously going you know, beyond that, because they're sure. not saying, you know, get rid of the ETL. That's what, that would be like get rid of 40% of the, you know, their workload. Right. Um, but how do you, how do you position yourselves against that? Yeah. Um, you know, what's the right, what's right. the message to the to the C level audience? Yeah. So there there are existing tools on a lot of platforms which are very good, and but a lot of them are, are geared towards you know just a their that that particular platform, right? Um, and then the other thing is they're geared more towards operational statistics on, on the database and, and how to manage it, or the data warehouse rather. Um, and that's, uh, again, if you're the DBA administrator, that's one thing. Um, but we also provide visibility out to the, to the business level, right? So if you have, let's say you're the internal um, IT department, you're trying to service operations, you're trying to service marketing, you're trying to service finance. Uh, the product can actually look at the data and do cuts of that based on the on the different businesses coming in so you can see you know which users from different departments are coming in so now when you have somebody from finance saying hey i need another you know 30 terabytes and it's got to be the highest performance you have because i'm running these type of reports you can associate a cost with the sla exactly what well, we can do we can do show back we can do charge yeah. back right yeah. and then basically you can tr you know say hey if if you're asking for this type of service let's actually look at how you're using this service right you may think that you are using this and, and that you need this level of SLA, okay. but in reality you're not. Or maybe it's the opposite. It's you've asked for this little, but boy, you're consuming half of my resources. Let's okay. have a conversation. Um, so it's sort of like the delta between what they want and what they actually use. What the reality use. is, yeah, okay. yeah. And this is, uh, you know, it's funny when you talk about storage. I mean, I came, you know, I had been at some of the big storage companies early in my career, and tiered storage is, you know, another thing that storage vendors try to think of is right. how do you tier it. In some ways, it's a similar fashion of. Uh, of I mean, I that. think EMC's got a good message right now. EMC saying, you know, start an EMC. Yeah. Everyone say, don't store your data in someone else's platform. They're saying, we're open, start in our platform. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of even Merv made a comment about Teradata. No one should put all their data in one platform, mm -hmm. but that's what Teradata wants, right? <laughs> so, so it's like everyone's saying the same thing. Don't yeah. store it in someone else's platform. Yeah. And but store it in ours. Yeah, well, I think the, the challenge is for a large enterprise, right, especially these really big companies, right, Fortune 500 companies, they have uh, they have a little bit of everything, right? They're yeah. going to have, you know, uh, some Teradata, some EMC, they're going to have uh, DB2. They, they always have some sort of mix, different departments, different areas. Um, and um, so we work closely with all those partners and um, in, in some of those areas it makes sense keeping in one system. Yeah. Um, and then other times it's, you know, you need to have that heterogeneous view and uh, we can help with that as well. So here's the question I want to have for you. I'm a customer and I say, yeah. hey guys, uh, here's my concern. Yes. I'm going to invest in a Hadoop project. We've done right. some POCs, my guys like it. Yeah, yeah. You know, pick a vendor, say Horton works. Sure. Or uh, whatever. And um, I'm really worried about foreclosing future opportunities. Yeah. So I want to have a data architecture where I can store my data, yeah. and I want to have the ability to say, hey, I want to move to the cloud and on-prem, and I want to have multiple players. I might want to have yes, Cloudera yes. Impala, 
I'll use Hortonworks here, yes, but I don't. Yeah, sure. I want to have the ability to go horizontally at a platform based on right. whatever my app needs are. Sure. So if I'm successful, well, if I'm not successful, I get fired. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I don't want to get fired. So help yes, me there yeah. too. If yeah. I'm successful, yes, I want to actually have growth. I don't want to have to pay more money and headaches. Yeah. To replicate that data. Mm. What do you say to that? Yeah, well, it's, it's um, you know, part of it is it's it's not a single... Store it and just storage and have a, like a commodity storage layer? No, no, I would say it's it's not, it tends to be a dynamic environment, a dynamic decision, right? It's not that you uh, will kind of move the data over, and a lot of companies do this or have the need that you'll know, take historical information and move it over to a lower tier and then you'll be done with it, right? But it's also, uh, you know, I've heard it called, the, it's a dynamic supply chain of data, right? You know, sometimes it's going here, sometimes it's going over there. And you've got to have the flexibility to move it around, right? You've got to have the flexibility to, to offload it. So, for example, you know, you talk about the cloud, right? We work with, um, you know, some of the major healthcare providers like uh, Philips, which is also a close uh, partner of Amazon, um, or a close customer, a big customer of Amazon, you know, focused at the reInvent show. And they try to figure out, you know, with, with uh, Redshift and with uh, Attunity, how do you go ahead and uh, take advantage of, of the capabilities to do analytics on demand, right, for some of their applications? Um, they might need that some of the time. They might need to do some of their analytics on their on-premise systems. So I don't think they give up that, that flexibility, but they want to have the ability to kind of choose as needed in those different areas. All right, so outlook for the industry as we wrap yeah. up here. What's your take looking back four years? What do you think? Looking ahead four years or no, back No, looking four back four okay. years and things, so look ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, where we've come, is the tide coming out for the big next wave being cloud or whatnot? Yeah, I think the uh, I, I, it's an irreversible trend in some ways, right? Um, you even look at um, you know where people are developing their, their systems. Right? Just from a technology standpoint, Hadoop is becoming like a data operating system, right? So more and more people are building solutions around that. So the trend is, is going in, uh, in that direction. But also towards what uh, yeah. uh, John said. Yeah. Do you think that if we move more and more to the cloud, yeah. with Redshift as one, yeah. you know, part of an example on, on AWS, yeah. will that data operating system be the data operating system for yeah. Azure, Google, and Amazon, mm -hmm. or will we see more heterogeneity? Yeah, that that's a good question because um, you know if you look at some, you know, what's the fastest growing, you know, kind of Hadoop adoption of platform? I think it's EMR, right? You know, in terms of just just sheer growth. So um, uh, don't don't have an answer to that one. It, it's a good one, um, but you know there's that general growth and, and trend of I call it the democratization of getting to data, right? Which is um, I've got to uh, you know I want to take advantage of Hadoop. It lowers the cost, makes it easier to do things. It makes it more you know you can run more things, create a bigger lake. I can go into the cloud very easily, right? You know, and I can set things up, uh, take advantage of that, do quick analytics. Um, we just announced a solution for Mongo, right? If you're a developer, now you can get into it much more quickly without having the, the DBA background and be a SQL expert, right? So I think the bigger trend is you know, the democratization of how do I get, you know, all these people in all these different departments have much greater access, lower cost, lower uh, entry points, easier to spin up than they ever did before, and that's where I think the excitement is. Okay, right. Lawrence, yeah. we're running, running out of time, got to sure. wrap. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Great to see you. Attunity, yeah. doing great, you guys are awesome. Big data, congratulations on your recent awards. Sure, and thank you. Thousands of customers, so yeah, business is good, and, and it's a healthy ecosystem, I'm really excited. So, yeah. half the people want to do, so that's not right. bad. It's a pleasure to talk to you guys as always. All right, this is theCUBE, we'll be right back after thanks this short break. Yeah, thanks.